we already know what to do when God says yes. What will you do when God says no? In the words of an older gentleman, he told me one day, he said, young man, you can't speed up the river and you can't slow it down. At a certain point, you got to have some faith. When things happen to redirection, it's a part of the journey. It makes it even sweeter in the end when the purpose is greater and about something greater than you. But this is what I've understood. In life, some people don't need you to preach a sermon. They need you to live one. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I'm like, God, are we moving like that? And I come into my junior year, and I'm about to get exactly what I want. About to get this thing called NFL. Ten games away from this dream. This thing that I've been working for my whole life. My whole life is dedicated to this one game. I got the paperwork that states I'm about to be an NFL draft pick. NFL on top of the paper, Inky Johnson projected top 30 automatic multi-millionaire. Now all you have to do, the hard part's over, just play the next 10 football games, Ink, you, you, you made it. And I go out in a silly game against Air Force, two minutes left, and I go to make a tackle that I can make with my eyes closed. And when I hit him, every breath from my body left, my body goes completely limp, I fall to the ground, I blacked out, my eyes open, I'm still not you know, too concerned, because it's football. When my eyes open, guys run over, Ink, let's rock, man, let's go, let's finish them off. And I'm like, I, I can't. I said, I can't move. It's a shock, neck to my toes, I can't feel anything. Shock leaves, it stays in my right arm and hand. I'm like, maybe I got a bad stinger. They put me on the spine board, willing me off the field. Doctor says to me, as he's walking beside me, I don't know how you're still alive, son, you don't have any pulse. We get to the ambulance, my father's standing there, I'm like, Pops, I laid it on him, right? I put it on him, right? My dad's like, yeah, but I think you got the worst part of this one. Man. Doctor said, we're gonna take you over, run a couple tests, bring you back into the room, everything will be cool. They run the test, they bring you back into the room, mom comes in, kisses, prays, son, you'll be fine. Doctors rush in, hand boy says, hey man, we gotta rush him back to surgery, he's about to die. If we don't perform this surgery tonight, I guarantee you, you won't be here no more. And now the thing I placed my identity in, now it's gone. That's why I laugh at people when they say, man, if I could just get this, I'll be. Man, if I could just get this position, I'll be. Woo! Man, if I could just get this amount of money, I'll be. I'm like, Ooh. But what happens even if you get it or you don't get it? What happens when God says yes and no? Like, do you have the ability to accept what you don't understand? Can you still see God's plan when it didn't go the way that you thought it would go? Can you handle when things get off course? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm eight games away and God is redirecting me. And I'm like, God, just let me get to the NFL, then redirect me. Like, let me get the contract, then redirect me so I can help my family. And God is like, no, son, I need you to really go that way. And I'm like, you sure? Like, man, I need to go this way. He's like, no, I need you to go this way. I got something greater for you. Now, it might take a little longer to manifest, but I got something even sweeter. And I said, thank you, God. And I thought it was over after football got redirected. My life got redirected two, three more times before I even fell into my purpose and my mission and what I was supposed to be doing. It got redirected two, three more times. I'm thinking I'm going to be a coach. Just like every guy when he finishes the game. And I'll just coach. God's like, no, you ain't. I'm like, boy, this is it. Nope, no peace. And I always tell a story about when my faith was fortified and my life went to another level was the only thing I had at that moment was a prayer and a book. And the prayer that I prayed was, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. Exact prayer, I don't know what you want me to do. But people keep coming to me, telling me, speak, Inky, you need to speak. And I'm like, I'm not speaking. And God brought me to the point where I had nothing and I was on my knees and I said, Lord, listen, I don't know if this is what you want me to do, but I submit and let's rock. And the next morning I woke up, I had my book I had written. I got up and I looked at my wife, I said, I'm gonna take this book to open. And so I got my book, I got my suit, it's hot. Every door that opened, I ran in it. I'm like, hey man, Inky Johnson, drove from Atlanta. They're like, get out of here. I'm like, man, over people, rude, man. I thought, you nice, you give away cars, I just rude. So after getting kicked out of like four doors, I go to the back of the building. I 
I sit down, I put my back on the building, look up to the sky, and I'm like, God, man, I thought it was you. I'm like, man, my wife would you me out, man. I get up, I look down the sidewalk, and at this moment, there was nobody but Oprah and the security guard. I'm talking about nobody else. She's walking toward me, I'm walking toward her. I get a couple of feet away, I stop. She grabbed my suit. She said, hey, that's a nice suit. I said, thank you. I said, I drove from Atlanta. I wanted to get you my book. She said, oh, cool, great. I said, would you mind taking a picture? We take a picture, and I'm going to walk off. She said, I got to get in and do my show. I said, all right, thank you. And I'm going to walk off, and her security says to me, said, uh, hey, young man, come here. I stopped. I went back to him. He said, I just want to tell you something. He said, what just happened never happens. He said, now, I don't know what's going to come out of it. I don't know book club, show. I don't know about any of that. He said, but I just want to make sure I tell you what just happened never happens. Like, God, are we really moving to the point where I can get up in Atlanta, Georgia, look at my wife, don't know nobody in Chicago, don't know nobody on Oprah's staff, and look at my wife and say, I'm going to meet Oprah. I got a certain level of faith that I'm going to meet Oprah. And God puts me face to face with Oprah and puts the book in her hand. I said, God, let's go. And so now I live my life a certain type of way according to what God has done. I live my life a certain type of way according to the power that I know the Lord possesses. I live my life a certain type. Like when I go to the Lord in prayer, I go bold. Like at a certain point, like what is it really about? Like, and I know the initial reaction when we go through things is to say, man, why did this have to happen to me? And it's an honest reaction. Because sometimes good people go through some crazy stuff. And some of the things we go through, I'm going to just be real, it's not, a, it's not a scripture for it. At a certain point, you're going to hit something that's going to test that level of faith. And my definition of commitment was always staying true to what I said I would do long after the mood that I've set it in has left. Like, am I going to stay true to my beliefs and my core and my essence of who I am as an individual, even if I get a paralyzed right arm and hand? Am I going to stay true to it, even if my little career that I thought I was going to have disappears? Am I going to stay true to it, even if one day I'm in a football game, the thing I love to do, the thing I have been practicing my whole life, and then one moment it gets wiped out? Am I going to stay true to it? Because depending upon if I'm going to stay true to it, a lot of other people's belief in their Christian journey is predicated upon that and my belief in my Christian journey. In other words, I've seen a lot of other people say, Inky, I want to give my life to Christ, not because of something that happened with me, but because of something I've seen happen to you. And people have the nerve to ask me all the time, Inky, why wouldn't you change what happened to you? You got a paralyzed right arm and hand. I'm like, if you only knew and if you only saw the works that God has done in people's lives around me, what he's done in me, yeah, it's great, it's cool. But what God has done in the people's lives around me, like, you can't put a price on that. We already know what to do when God says yes. We already know what to do when our prayers get answered. But the question that I have for you in this rhetorical, what will you do when God says no? No.